Hey everybody, it's Amy from Magic and Light Collection. You can buy all of our products at www.magicandlightcollection.com. So today I wanted to give you guys an elements tutorial on um, how to use some of our vintage spring actions. And so today I'm going to work with this picture of my dad's dog. And um, you can see that it's a little bit underexposed. This is a raw image. and um, so they don't come together quite as nicely as JPEGs, but they're much more editable. So um, you can see it's pretty underexposed here in the face. I don't think that the background is too bad, but um, really needs some help. So I think I want to choose one of our all-in-one actions for this. And um, the all-in-one actions should really edit your image from start to finish. And the one that I'd like to work with is called Verdant. And so I'm going to double click and um, don't pay attention to this pop-up. This is an issue that I have. Okay, so you can see it ran through the layers and um, improved the image. So without messing with any of the layers, you can see this is the before and this is the after. And so it's pretty good. It really makes a big difference. And um, but there are a couple issues that I see that I definitely want to fix. And um, if you see something that looks funny, just go through the layers and click them off and click them back on to see what's causing the problem. And um, just go through and see. Okay, so the problem that I'm seeing is that his eyes are very dark. Um, and this is a little bit too dark because I really want to bring them out. So the contrast layer is responsible for this. And so I want to go ahead and paint off the contrast. So I'm going to choose my brush tool. I'm going to choose a black foreground color. Make sure that it's black. Whatever your layer mask is, this one is white. I want to choose black. You're going to choose the opposite. See this one here is black. I want to choose white. So with the black foreground color selected, the brush tool selected, and um, my brush opacity selected at about 80%, I'm just going to go around his eye here and take off some of that contrast. Take it off over here too. Okay. A little bit too much down here as well. So I'm going to take this off. Just brighten that up. Alright, so we'll click it off, back on, and it's a little dark right here for me. So I'm going to take that off. Alright, that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to keep going through the layers. That one looks good. And <clears throat> what I'm noticing is that this shadow right here on his face is still pretty dark. And so I want to lighten that up. So I'm going to use the light brush, click on the black layer mask, and choose the opposite color for the foreground color. So I'm going to choose white. Brush tool is selected. Now, I want to start using the light brush at like 25%. I really don't want it to be too high. And I'm going to want my brush to be about that size. And make sure that you're using a soft edge brush. And I'm just going to paint on that shadow to start lighting, lightening it up. I'm going to hit it again just to lighten it up a little bit more. Let's go around here a little bit. Alright, that looks pretty good to me. 
Um, and so this is before I used the light brush, heavy shadow on the face. After I used the light brush, the shadow is um, a lot less. And um, so that looks pretty good to me, but the whole image looks a little bit uh, cool. So I'm gonna use a tone and I'm um, just going to click on the top layer here and I'm going to double click on this tone called Orange Blossom. So double click. Now you can run these tones on the top layer. You don't have to worry about the layer order. Um, and so this is before I added the Orange Blossom and after. So um, it actually looks pretty good to me. Um, there are just a couple areas that I'm not crazy about. So I'm just going to click it off and click it on and see. Uh, one of the areas here is his nose. That's just a little bit too much and um, maybe the tongue. So we'll see. So I'm going to click on the white layer mask. And since it's white, I'm going to select a black foreground color with my brush tool. And I'm just going to paint off the effect and I'm going to start at 40%. So I'm just going to paint it off of his nose here. And I'm going to check it, click it off, click it on. And I like um, the effect that it has on his eyes. It really brightens and warms up his eyes. And also um, the effect that it has here on the background colors. So I think that that looks pretty good. Um, you can see that his tongue looks pretty blue down here and by adding orange blossom it really fixes that problem. So let's just see where we started. Um, and actually also I should add that you don't have to use the vintage haze layers. I think it looks really nice but in this case I want a um, really colorful um, image that pops. So, but we can try and see. There's with Vintage Haze. And I actually am going to drag it above the Orange Blossom layer. And if I were going to use this, I would just take it down a little bit. You can adjust it um, to whatever suits you. But I'm not going to use that layer, so I'm just going to click it off. Now let's check out the before and after. This is before we ran Verdant and Orange Blossom. And this is the after. It is uh, really a quick edit using these actions and um, can help your workflow tremendously. So I want to run um, Doughy Eyes next because I think his eyes could pop just a little bit more. So I'm going to flatten the image. And doughy eyes has to be run on a flattened background layer. If you try to run it on top of an action, it's going to mess up. So make sure that you're running it on a flattened background layer. So I'm going to double click doughy eyes right here. Okay, so you can see that I ran the action and nothing happened. This is the way it was designed to work. So um, you can see all of the layers here and they have black layer masks. So you will have to reveal the effect um, within the layer mask. The first one that I like to start with is bright eyes and since it's black I'm going to choose a white foreground color and I'm going to take my brush opacity down to 20 percent and I'm going to make my brush pretty small. You can zoom in if you want to if that helps and I'm just going to paint over the iris. Okay. Um, the next one I like to use is bright light. I'm going to take my brush opacity up quite a bit to about 60%. And I'm just going to paint over the catch lights right here. Really kind of bring those out. Try to keep close to the constraints of the catch lights. There we go, and I don't really see one over here, uh, but the closest thing I see is this little 
area. So we'll go ahead and use that. Um, next, I'll use pop of color. And I'm going to go way down on this one to about 18%. Just brush on color on the iris. His are already pretty colorful, and we want the effect to be natural. So i um, just going to paint that on a little bit. You can see before I painted it on and after. It's a subtle, very subtle difference. Um, I like to use the clarity brush last. So I'm going to click on that layer mask. And I'm going to take my opacity up to about, we'll say 55%. And I'm just going to brush on his eye, sharpen it up. Normally I would brush all around this area um, as well, but the verdant action took care of that, and it's actually a little too sharp. Um, we can't change it now, but um, I probably should have brushed that off just a little bit. So now I'm going to zoom out and check my work. So it looks like um, Bright Eyes might be a little too much, so I'm going to take it down take the layer of opacity down a little bit. Okay, we'll just leave it there. Let's look at bright lights. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit more. Oops. Oops, bright lights. Okay. And mm, I think that looks all right. Let's check pop of color. That looks good. Clarity brush. That looks pretty good. It makes it nice and shiny. Okay, so that's it. Let's see where we started before we ran doughy eyes. That's the before. Um, his eyes are pretty dark. And that's the after. They really pop. So I hope this is helpful for you and um, if you have any questions let me know on the Facebook page I'm always happy to answer and you can find all of our products at www.magicandlightcollection.com